So just like always, we're on our next lesson, which is lesson 15-2. We did the beginning in class for our independent practice. So we are now going to move on to our next part. So that's been done in class. So hang on to number five. The angle turns through a fifth of the circle. So if it's gone from here to here, how much has it gone through? Remember, the circle is 360. And so what do I need to do? I need to find one-fifth of 360. So whenever I hear of, that is that multiplication. So what is one-fifth of 360? So that is 360 divided by 5. So it's going to go in 7 times. Multiply, subtract, check. 1 is less than 5, so bring down. 5 goes into 10 2 times. Multiply, subtract, check. So my answer is 72 degrees. So a fifth of a circle, this part right here, is 72 degrees. Hang over to number 8. The angle turns through 3 eighths of the circle. So I'm looking for this mystery part right here. So that's 3 eighths of the circle, and the circle is 360. So remember that of means that I am multiplying. So what do I need to do? Well, I need to first figure out what is a unit of it. So I have two options for this. My other way is I can do 3 eighths times 360 like we did in that last problem, or I can think about my units. So remember, 1 eighth of a circle from our lesson in class, 1 eighth of 360 is 45 degrees, and so what would that be? Well, here I have 45 degrees, but I have three groups of them. So that's one group, two groups, three groups. So I can do 45 times three. So my answer is going to be 135 degrees. Three-eighths of a circle is 135 degrees. So now we have this. The angle turns through two-fifths of a circle. So I am thinking, how much is it going to be? Well, I need to break it up into five pieces. So 360, I'm breaking up into five pieces. That's going to go in how many times? Well, look, right up here, I know that it's 72. So I don't have to redo that problem. But now I have two pieces of 72. So I have one piece, two pieces. So that's 72 times 2, which is 144 degrees. Now my next one, the angle turns through 2, 6. Well, here, I have 360, and I need to break it up into six pieces. So what I'm doing is I'm looking for one piece right now, and then after I find what this one piece equals, I'm looking for two. So that's 360 divided by six. Six goes into 360 six times. Multiply, subtract, zero is less than six. So bring down, six goes into zero, zero times. Multiply, subtract, and check. So one piece is 60, and here I have two pieces because there's two. So that's 60 times 2 is 120 degrees, which I see over here. One piece is 60 plus another piece is 60. On to our next one. Use a clock to find the measure of the smallest angle formed by the hands at each time. Well, at 3 o'clock, this is what it's going to look like. Oops, I had that backwards. At 3 o'clock, this is what it's going to look like. So what is that going to be? Well, that's a right angle, so my answer is 90 degrees. What's my next one going to be? 11 o'clock. So here I have the small hand and then the big hand. So what is this angle right here? Well, how many pieces are there for a clock? There's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. There's 12 pieces for a clock. And I'm looking for one piece. So I'm looking for 1 12th of 360. So we have 360 divided by 12. 12 goes into 36 three times. Multiply, subtract, bring down. 12 goes into 0, 0 times. Multiply, subtract, check. So 30. So I'm looking for this one piece. This one piece is equal to 30 degrees. Now my next one is 2 o'clock. So I'm going to make this one in red. So here I have two and here. Well, I've noticed that this is one piece, two piece, 
And for my previous problem, I know 2 pieces is 130 plus 230. So what is 30 plus 30? Well, that's 60. So I'm looking for at 60 degrees. That's 2 pieces out of 12. Here's 1 piece. Here's 2 pieces out of 12 of 360. OK, my next one. J.C. Rowan equation and find an angle measure. What do the variables A and B represent? Well, A, I'm going to think, what is that doing? Well, that's telling me the number of equal parts I have to divide the circle in. So that's the equal parts circle is divided into. So here, if we had 360 divided by 6, breaking up into 6 parts, what would that mean? Well, that means it's 60. And what was this 60 again? Well, that's my degrees. So B is my answer, and that's the degrees in the circle. So that's my degrees in each part. All right, now on to number 11. A mirror can be used to reflect a beam of light at an angle. What fraction of the circle would the angle pass through? Well, here I have 360, and my parts that I have, because remember, fractions are always parts over whole, or parts over total. My total is 360 degrees, and it's going this much through. So it's going through 120 of them. So what would my fraction be? Well, it's 120 over 60, which I know I can divide by 12. I can divide by 12, which is then 10 over 30, which I then know I can divide by 10, and divide by 10, that numerator and denominator, whatever I do to the top, I have to do the bottom. So my final answer is 1 third. So problem number 12 says Malik paid $32.37 for three books. One book costs $16.59. The second book costs $4.27. How much did the third book cost? Use bills and coins to solve. So what I have is I have three books that have been bought. Book one, book two, and book three. And all together, they cost this much. All together, it costs $32.37. So what is it I need to do? Well, I have $32.37, and I need to take away this much so I see what I have left over. So subtracting, I need to do my regrouping. Still need to do my regrouping. Still need to do my regrouping. So this one has three different regroupings. So after that one book was spent, what I have left is this much. This much right here is equal to $15.78. Now I need to take away this $4.27 and see what I have left. So how much does this last book cost? Well, this last book costs $11.51. And what I can do to check that really fast is I can add up sixteen fifty nine plus eleven dollars and fifty one plus four dollars and twenty seven, and all together when I add it, it should equal this thirty two thirty seven. So here we have ten plus seven. Here we have thirteen. Regroup. Here we have six plus four is ten plus two. Regroup. And look, my answers match, so I know I had the correct answer. So how much did that third book cost? $11.51. For number 13, a pie was cut into equal parts. Four pieces of the pie were eaten. The five pieces that remained created an angle that was 200 degrees. What was the angle measure of one piece of pie? So here it was cut into equal parts. We have four were eaten. And then we have five pieces that remained. So if we have four that were eaten, five that remained, that means it was cut into nine pieces. Then we also have 360 divided by 9. 360 goes in 4 times. Multiply, subtract, check, bring down. 9 goes into 0, 0 times. Multiply, subtract. So one piece was 40 degrees. What I can also do to check that, because this is 1 ninth, 1 ninth is 40 degrees. What I could also do is it says 5 pieces remain created at an angle of 200 degrees. So I could have also done 5 and 200 and divide that. And you'll notice I get that exact same answer. So I could have done it with the five pieces that remained, or I could have done it with the nine total pieces that I started with. <clears throat> Either way, my answer is 40 degrees. Now, for my next one, number 14, Jake cut a round gelatin dessert into eight equal pieces. So here's my picture. Here's my round gelatin dessert. 
There's my eight pieces. Five of the pieces were eaten, so one, two, three, four, five. What is the angle measure that was left? So I'm looking for this angle. What was left? Well, here, what is one eighth of 360? For my previous problems, I know that's 45. Just to check that, I'm going to do 360 divided by 8. 1 eighth of, so remember that is multiplying. 8 goes into 36 four times. Multiply and get 32. Subtract, and I get 4. 4 is less than 8, so I can bring down. 8 goes into 45 times. Multiply, subtract, and check. So 45 degrees. So each of these pieces is 45 degrees. And here I have 45 with three groups. So I have 45 times 3. So what is that? Regroup. My answer is 135 degrees. So the angle of the pi that was left is 135 degrees. For next one, it says draw a line from the time on the smaller angle. The time, let me just restart that. It says draw a line from the time to the smaller angle of time which is on the clock. Use the clock to help. So here is 3 o'clock, so that's going to look like this. And I notice that is a right angle. So I'm going to match those up. My next one, I have 10 o'clock. So here is my 10, and here is my 12. And what do I notice here? Remember clock, there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. There's 12 pieces that this clock is broken up into. So I'm going to break my clock up into 12. And for my 10 o'clock, I'm looking for these two. So what is that? Well, what is 1 12th or 1 piece of 360? For my previous clock problem, I know that 12 divided by 360 is 30. So that means each of these pieces is 30. So here I have two pieces, 30 and 30. So 30 times 2, or two pieces, is 60. For my next one, we have 6 o'clock. So here we have big hand is at the 12, and then 6 o'clock. So notice that's a straight line, and straight lines are 180. We also know that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 pieces. So 6 times 30 is also equal to 180. So my last one to check out, we're going to go with this dark marker color with blue. We have 4 o'clock. So 4 o'clock, we have, again, 12 and 4. So what do we have? We have 1, 2, 3, 4. So we have 4 pieces. Remember, 1 piece is 30. Let me write that a little better there. And we have 4 of them. So that's 4 times 30, which is 120, which matches our last one. All right, that's all we have.